Hi guys, it's Mark Zickrey, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickrey of Space Command. And I wanted to give you a holiday present as a thank you for all of the support and all of the encouragement and all of the wonderful things you've done to help me get to this point. Now, many of you know that uh, recently we uh, premiered the first hour of the Space Command pilot at the Drama Summit in London where we were meeting with executives from Stars and Epics and Netflix and Amazon and on and on and on. It was terrific. We're going to be having follow-up meetings with many of these executives. Our goal is to sell Space Command as a series so that we can get it to you all the, all the faster. We'll have a lot more money. Uh, but meantime, we're continuing with um, post-production and ramping up for production. Lots to tell you about. But for now, what I want to do is share with you the first hour of the Space Command pilot. It's even more refined than what we showed in London a few weeks back, but, but this is a work in progress, and so you'll notice certain glitches and rough edges, but we're working on it. I've just hired uh, someone who had been consulting with us. We've now hired him as the visual effects supervisor. That's Mitch Suskin, who is a three-time Emmy winner and an eight-time Emmy nominee. He uh, won for Lost. He won for Star Trek Enterprise. He uh, most recently has been working on Star Trek Discovery. He is a giant in the industry, and I'm thrilled to have him aboard. So uh, over the next few weeks, we'll be refining the first hour and then moving right into post production, visual effects, etc. on the second hour. And while we're doing that, we're also going to be ramping up to shoot the rest of our second two-hour story, Forgiveness, of which we've shot the first 40 minutes. So there's lots of adventures ahead, lots of fun. Um, we're still selling Space Command shares. You can email me at markzikri at gmail.com or call me at 323-363-1259 if you'd like to buy uh, $7,500 shares and be part of uh, the profits that will accrue from this uh, amazing project that I've been embarked upon with uh, so many of my friends and so many of you. So that's it for now. I hope you've, you've had a, and are having a great holiday. And uh, without any further ado, the first hour of Space Command. Many years ago, great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said because it is there. The space is there. And we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. Therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. Oh no, brother! We lost hydrogen control. The ship could get you to the Oort cloud here, right? Grappling lines? She's too hot. You grab hold, she'll tear apart. Our instruments are non-functional. My daughter and I need help, urgent help! Heat's scrambling the reception. They don't know we're here. Sir, I think I can maneuver and get under her hull. Negative, Lieutenant. We can't risk this ship. We can't just let them burn to death. It's enough, Lieutenant. Inform HQ, we'll follow her down and Send coordinates on the debris field. <laughs> Video survival compartment. Santos, you're still there! That's it. She's done for. Buckle in, sir.
Let me know when your hole's cool enough for us to grab hold. Glad to be of service, Dr. Adara. Captain, brought the med kit. Your hands. I'm fine. Attend to my daughter, please. your ship all to hell. So they give you a shiny new one. I did. My day we call them road captains. Retired on active duty. Senior officers just waiting for their pension. Keeping their heads tucked in. Never taking a risk. Dad, just hold your tongue. Park Hill will get kicked up the food chain and you'll make captain. Another victory for spinelessness. Get a failure in nerve, that's all. I wasn't talking about him. <sighs> this place sure has changed. It used to be a desert. It's all just the synthetics. He's two months away from retirement. Well, I'm supposed to burn down his career and mine. Word on a grapevine is he's rethought that. What? Now that he's been kicked up the chain of command, he's put off his retirement indefinitely. So one more bad penny keeps getting to make life and death decisions. in the good old days. Humans weren't designed to observe. We were built to do. So yeah, I miss them. Let me tell you something. Soft lives make soft men. Soft men make soft choices.
What's the point of that? You're not even on the planet. But Mecca is. You keep saying that. So do you. And I'll keep on saying it. It doesn't make a frigging bit of sense. You have to have something to believe in. I believe when this shift is over, I'm gonna have a drink. After a 30-year delay, the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded today to human rights activist Anoka Chandamal Kemmer, whose United Planet movement culminated in her future husband, Captain Anson Kemmer of the United States Space Command, spearheading a multinational force that tethered a captured ice comet to the North Pole, causing the Gulf Stream to be renewed and averting an ecological disaster of catastrophic proportions. In other news, British forces on Titan faced insurgents today. There were no reported fatalities. We snared a comet, hauled it to Earth. It was a hell of a thing. I was a hero to the whole world. But to the brass, I was still a pain in the ass. But it's never about the brass. The sore up there, that's what it's about. That sky's been calling to the men of our family ever since your great-great-grandfather joined the Lafayette Escadrille in World War I. We fly. That's what we cameras do. And one day, you're gonna have a ship of your own, and you're gonna fly a lot farther. And you take care of her and your crew. Getting away from it all? I'm beginning to feel grateful for those 30 years of peace. It's so good to have you home. Sorry I didn't make the ceremony. My only regret is that they didn't honor your father as well. An idea as unpopular as mine was is nothing without a relentless someone driving it home. What was the overlook? I, I love your father dearly, but he would alienate as many people as he would enroll. Politics. to follow in his footsteps. That's his courageous path. Except I know that's not possible. Courage doesn't follow. Are you alive? No. Are you a man? No. What are you? A machine. And what is your purpose? To be of service. And whom do you serve? Whoever leases me. And how does that make you feel? Happy. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I give you Dor Nevin, the first of what will soon be legions of contented synthetic workers to serve your every need. Brought to you by Mazzy Patillo. Questions? Yeah. Can they harm humans or allow humans to come to harm? With the exception of the combat models, no. If, like the brochure says, they're smarter than we are, what's to prevent them from doing whatever they want? Good question. The same thing that compels them to safeguard humans and obey their every command. An inhibitor chip guaranteed for the life of the model. Now, there'll be time for more questions at the reception, but for right now, let's show our friend here exactly what we think about him, okay? You hear that? <laughs> they love you! <laughs> Are you alive? Uh, no. How bad is it? Bad, but it could have been worse. Only synthetics, no humans? Thank God for that. <laughs> what do you want done with them? Burn them. They're under warranty. We'll get some more. I think I can fix this one. Ah, trash him. He's not worth it. You got something better for me to do? Uh -huh. Suit yourself. Come on. Let's go. supposed to be your ship. You're the man of the hour, Captain. It is not for me to question the wisdom of the brass. I just wanted to apologize. They're readying her sister ship, the Templar. I'll be out there soon enough. What happened there? An explosion with the Alcubierre drive. Took out a lot of good men. Command hushed it up. No faster than light speed for the foreseeable future. Solar system will have to do. Listen, do you want to get a cup of coffee or on the sandwiches they have here? That'll make you glad to get back to Mars. No, thank you. That's not what you're here for. Welcome to the Paladin. show it to you sometime. Thank you. It's just a movie. <clears throat> Sorry I don't have much in the way of parts. Thank you for my life. I thought you weren't alive. It's a matter of debate. Oh, sorry, that's, uh, that's my son. He's in boarding school on Mars. Hey, Dad, I... Wow, a synthetic. You've never brought one of those home before. Where are your manners, Odin? His name is Doran Evan. Hi. 
pleased to meet you. Can we keep him? He's company property. I'm just fixing him. It seems only fair. They were going to destroy me. Why are you different than all the others? Odin, I was originally designed for something else. What? Private service. For important rich people? Yes. How'd you end up in the mines? We were crafted to ask questions to more efficiently do our jobs. But I was the first, and I had an eccentricity. Sometimes it seems I asked questions which made my owners uneasy. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm like you. Uh, we'll talk more later, son. Yeah, but Dad... Goodbye, Odin. You saw something, didn't you? Your inhibitor. It's been destroyed. You could replace it? Of course. Please. Don't. Three quarters up there. Med bay, engineer, down there. Mark six. Deck creates a current through the entire suit, simulating 1G. Strike fighters. Pulse cannons, upper, lower, grappling lines. It works. It is a new car smell. Captain on deck. At ease. This is Simek. My intel off. Your intel officer. Chilton? I keep this bird alive. Glad to hear it. Le Guin. Navigation. Radbury. Pilot. Have you ever been to Mars, Lieutenant? No, sir. I'm looking forward to it. Sometimes hard getting used to the fact you go outside without protection, you die. I'm from Detroit, sir. You'll do fine. So, not only stolen your ship, I've also taken your crew. I'll do you proud. And if you decide to save two more women from burning to death, They'll follow you into the mouth of hell. I'm not, uh, I'm not planning on doing that again anytime soon. I don't know, Captain. It's a pretty big sky. Hey, Laura. When you hit Marsport, maybe we can grab that sandwich. On second thought, we better not. I've got issues. I can be pretty entertaining. Remarkable animals, you men. Chimpanzees could not have done all this. Not without considerable modification. I thought you'd run away. I thought about it. But where would I run? Or more to the point, how? Do you like it here? It's a paycheck. It's a prison. 
Should you be saying this to me? Who else could I possibly say it to? I'm starting to get that uneasy question thing you've got going. I used to feel the same way about this place. Used to. Well, except for my son, I've stopped feeling almost everything. And yet, you believe in God. I've watched you pray from the mines. You, as I, are unlike the rest. My wife, Aronique, she was unlike the rest. We were camping, Yellowstone, you know it? Yes. Odin was barely a year old. This was before the volcano, of course. There was a flash flood burst through without warning. Big boulders, trees roaring by. Never seen anything like it. The water's alive, murderous. We got to high ground, but there was another family that was trapped. Veronique got a rope across, climbed over. And manage to start them back, one by one. Now it was her turn. But by then, the water was higher. Odin was screaming. So I handed him off to one of the others. I, I moved along the rope. I stretched out my hand. And she was gone. If I had just had the faith to let go of the rope, to leap, you'd have both been killed. Since then, the only thing I've heard from God is silence. Maybe he's speaking to you now. The family you still have is on Mars. We could join him. Emergency power. Armed. Lead air control panel. Set. Fusion system panel. Set. Cabin pressure. Auto. Ladies and gentlemen, we are good to go. You all know this is my first command. And I know that you are expecting to be flying with somebody considerably more experienced and attractive. I also don't have to tell you who my father is. He casts a pretty big shadow. He and I, we don't see eye to eye on things. But he shared a story once with me about a young sailor, a long time back, who boarded his new ship and saw not one able-bodied seaman. So he leans to the nearest and says, Is that man deaf? Aye, aye, he's deaf. But he sees the reef before we near it. And while I, though blind, feel the wind before it blows, keep us safe from storm. Oh, and your, your captain, with no legs? Aye, he must be carried. But he always knows the way. Alone, true, we're of little worth. But together, we are invincible! I, I just made that up. <laughs> but still, 
Whatever our individual weaknesses, together we will be invincible. Are you with me? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right. Lieutenant Bradbury. Yes, sir. If you don't mind, Captain's prerogative. Yes, sir. Command, this is Paladin. Requesting permission to get this show on the road. Roger that, Paladin. You are clear to begin launch sequence. On my mark. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. is away. That's my girl. to meet you. I'm sorry. I have I lost track of the time. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm early. Uh, someone directed me. Yeah, I've never seen the new Kyoto section. Mm. But these are mining tunnels? Were. Mostly played out. Thank you for coming. I found out who was really responsible for Yelena's and my survival, and uh, I wanted to show my appreciation, albeit several weeks late. I have a gift. No, well, it's... Captain. It is Captain Elias. Arguing with me is a pointless endeavor. Only it's not here. We have to, um... I had a bite here with my team. They headed off to ready some things. I never imagined there was anything like this down here. It was built when they still had human miners. For workers? For workers, by workers. Who understood the needs of the soul. Please. I didn't know that the synthetics eight. They can. Of course, there are more easily processed energy sources, but... Uh, but what? They still come. Let's go. Showing me how you did that. How you healed third-degree burns. Is that the gift that you had in mind? No. That's not something I can give. Please. Site 14.04. Have you ever heard of Huntington's chorea? It's a genetic disorder. Before they found a cure, it would affect coordination and in dimension. Before they found the cure is when I was diagnosed. Only there was an experimental procedure, not yet approved. <sighs> I begged. It's not that I was afraid of death so much as it's never accomplishing what you were meant to do. <laughs> yes. And? It 
worked. And it had the most remarkable, unintended, let's just say, that I'll stay this age for a very long time. Why wasn't it? Trumpeted to the world. Without considering the possible role of the Huntington's gene, the maker of my miracle poured his chemicals into patients with a dozen other illnesses. They all died. Horrible, painful deaths. And the would-be savior disappeared his secret with him. Does your daughter know? About me? Even if we could duplicate the formula, the gene wasn't passed on to her. Why burden her with knowledge that... She could never be like you. I found the perfect man for my gift. What is it? It's a beacon, Captain. We're not alone. This was here? When miners started finding strange artifacts in the tunnels below, he did some deep ground scans. There's no city here, but there's one large mass the scans cannot penetrate. At a 200 million year level. Million? This is an old world, Captain. It's old secrets. That's why I became an archaeologist. Because they speak to us. All those who have gone before. Other cultures, distant times. And they're all across space. Mm -hmm. We've been deciphering some of the pictograms. And we're coming to believe. Doctor, we've broken through to the chamber. You should come. I'll be there directly. It's the chamber. We've been awarded a grant by the Mazipatillo Corporation to find what's down there. The technology company. We hired an excavation team with a mining experience, and it sounds as if we may have our answer. I'm sorry. I have to leave. So you know what they're trying to say? Not yet. Not completely. But I'm hopeful it's along the lines of, come find us, we're one. It's fading. It seems to ride the storm. Well, I'm not the only one in demand. Well, that's my superiors, reeling me in. Well, not that they bother to say what for. <laughs> Thank you. For that. I hope you find what you're looking for. And you as well. Captain Kemmer. So the Templar was Dr. Red Sands. Congratulations. Thank you. Room! Attention! Be seated. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I've summoned you because a situation has arisen which could present considerable hazard to... Oh hell, you can explain this a damn sight better than I can. Greg Massey, the Massey Patillo Corporation. Thank you, Joe. Hi, folks. Some of you I've met before. I'm sure the rest of you are thinking, uh, he's a lot shorter in person. <clears throat> Several weeks ago, we suffered a catastrophic incident at one of our mining facilities in the asteroid belt. And in the chaos that followed, one of our pieces of equipment experienced a serious malfunction and has gone missing. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. The Siths are setting up lights now. We'll be able to show you what we've uncovered in just a moment. Oh, don't keep me in suspense. Tell me. Oh, you'll be delighted, I assure you. Какой сладок и ваш лепты стало. Кстати, что с тебя забрали? Что ты? What are you two talking about? Nothing. Doctor Dar, you're a very handsome archaeologist. I was just wondering if I might. You're a sweet man, but I'm just not. You're sure the door Nevin's damaged? He seemed to be working just fine, what little I saw of him. The very fact that he could leave the mining facility indicates that his inhibitor chip is disabled. He should have been returned to a warranty station for repurposing. And that's exactly why the synthetics are only leased. But it's funny, it's Dor. He was the first one off the assembly line, and I don't know, I always felt a little bad that I'd lost track of him. He said that there's an accident at the mines. Perhaps he wanted to work somewhere less hazardous. It's not his choice, Captain. Any more than your ship has the right to tell you where it wants to go. They can't make informed decisions. Well, at a Japanese restaurant, I saw some synthetics having a meal. No, I highly doubt that. Their fuel cells are more than adequate. Well, they seem to be doing it for enjoyment. Captain, I make a very good product, and I understand that some people even anthropomorphize their vehicles, so I shouldn't be so surprised when they project human feelings on my machines. But for you, a man of your caliber... Pops, back off. Caps is taking us where we want to go. You don't have to bust his chops. Excuse me. In uh, all of the excitement, proper introductions weren't made. Captain Kemmer, this is my son, Alton. And this is my assistant, Mary Jane who does all the real work. Except for the synthetics, of course. We lifted the yoke of toil off the shoulders of man. That's not such a bad legacy to leave the solar system, do you think? You're not done yet, Pop. <laughs> Come on, sit down. You'll get there just as soon as if you're standing. I always feel like I should be on my feet for a battle. Yeah, well, we're not battling now. We're just picking up some merchandise. See how they pamper me. <laughs> it's magnificent. It seems entirely empty. Why leave it here?
Yeah. Yes. The site is just below in the mines. Sir, getting readings. In the thrusters, Lieutenant Bradbury, match their speed. Yes, sir. McGuinn, scan that ship. Tell me who's on board. Our scans can't penetrate the hull. It's her power source. Unknown. But sublight, there's no telling what our specs might be. Lagoon, what's your projected course? The outer planets. Saturn and Jupiter are in opposition. It, it could be either. What are they doing? Sir, ship coming up on our six. It's the Templar. Captain Essex, glad to have a dance partner. General Haldman sent me to provide support. Deep rock scans revealed no bodies at the excavation site. Oh, Dr. Odara and her party are on that ship. Next time on Space Command. I do not yet know what the ship might do if provoked. You speak as if it were alive. On occasion, machines are. You've got them in your sights. You have to go after them. You should not have saved my skin, Jack. He was counting on your humanity. I doubt that I know my duty, Captain. You put it in your report. You put that in yours. This is suicide. Way that we can rescue those hostages. Down, down! You vaporize everybody on Earth? Our orders are wrong. You let all your people die. Even when faith is shaken, one can always hold on to hope.
I hope you enjoyed the hour of Space Command Redemption and the coming attractions of the second hour. And, and before we go, I actually wanted to share with you a little bit more of Space Command because uh, I think you're really going to love it as we move forward deeper into the season. As I mentioned, the first season will be 12 hour-long episodes, 12 hours. And uh, I've, I've written the first eight hours and outlined hours 9 through 12, and I've also written the prequel. So here's, here's just a little bit about where we're heading and we're going to show you uh, trailers from uh, both uh, the second two-hour story, Forgiveness, and the third two-hour story, uh, The Great Solar War, which will account for, along with Redemption, will account for um, fully six hours of the 12-hour season. So essentially, uh, where we go from here is uh, we'll go into the next two-hour story, which is called uh, forgiveness. And again, the basic way of structured in Space Command, uh, someone asked me if it's like the Orville where it's freestanding episodes or if it's like Star Trek Discovery where it's one story the entire season. It's basically uh, um, both, where each, um, each storyline, beginning, middle, and end, is broken up into two hour-long episodes, so, uh, similar to the Menagerie, that kind of thing, and, uh, and, and yet it forms a larger story arc so that you can watch all 12 hours and you get a bigger story that then leads into season two and season three and so forth. So, um, so the first two-hour story is entitled Redemption, second two-hour story is Forgiveness, third two-hour story is entitled The Great Solar War, um, the fourth one is called Empire, the fifth one is called um, Harvester, and the sixth one, our, it finishes out the first season, is called Mousetrap. And uh, the prequel is called A Hopeful Vision. And the way we've done that is we started publishing the Space Command comic book, which we're going to have for sale soon. And uh, that's uh, uh, Tahani Farah's illustrating a graphic novel. It'll be 60 or 70 pages of the prequel story, which, which starts 30 years prior to the pilot and ends right at where the pilot starts. So we're going to do it as a graphic novel and then as a radio play. Then we're going to marry them together into an animatic, an animated storyboard, and then we'll shoot the prequel. So uh, many wonderful adventures ahead. And uh, so now uh, here are the trailers for uh, Forgiveness and the Great Solar War. Coming soon on Space Command, Forgiveness. I didn't think we needed an introduction, you and me. What do you want? Come to Helios. Ready landing party arm in the teeth. Captain Kamarai. This is not your jurisdiction, it is mine. That man that you're shielding is a monster. Believe what you may about me, but let's get this done. Do not let the hatred of one person swerve you from the path of saving many innocent lives. You wake up every day crying for justice, but justice and vengeance become indistinguishable. Where is everybody? Hey! Put down the weapon. No! You ever seen a ship like that? No. Coming soon on Space Command, the Great Solar War. I have these dreams. Again. And again. And I wake up. And I know it's just a dream. Then I remember. It's 20 years later. And it's my son who's in danger.